double digits, possibly 10%. Katie. And Anthony, as we mentioned, the market was up more than 350 points, most of it after the Fed's announcement. So Wall Street was really happy to hear this news. They were, Katie, because they saw two key things. First, not only did the Fed knock rates to zero, but they said we're going to keep them here as long as it takes. Second, the Fed said we're going to spend as much as it takes to get credit moving. The key thing here is getting mortgage rates down, maybe as low as 4% to try to put a bottom under the housing market. All right, Anthony Mason, Anthony, thank you. Also heading down is inflation. In fact, it's gone. The government reported today that consumer prices in November fell 1.7%. That is the biggest drop on record, and those plunging gas prices led the way. That, of course, is good news for consumers, but this is not. Mark Strassman reports that even as the Fed is cutting interest rates for banks, banks are raising their credit card rates. True to her small-town roots, Miriam Majors has never lived large. She buys her clothes at Goodwill and always pays bills on time. Bye, y'all have a good day. So when Bank of America suddenly jacked her credit card's interest rate from 7.9% to 28%, this nurse was shocked. Have the rules changed? Did I miss something here? Turns out the bank changed her rate because her credit limit on another card had been slashed by more than $7,000. It just didn't make sense to me because I did know what our credit scores were. It's called balance chasing. Banks worried about their own rising loan defaults are chopping credit limits on customers who don't pay off their balance every month. It's a risky environment, so everybody's being a little bit, um, a little bit more careful. By one estimate, $2 trillion worth. 40% of available consumer credit will be gone by 2010. This one was 7.9. Once Miriam Major's balance was cut, it was a downward spiral. Banks noticed that she had less available credit, and that lowered her credit score by 50 points, from an excellent 783 to 733. And that's what made her interest rate balloon. They got you coming and going. Right. It's um, all to them. In a statement, Bank of America couldn't comment on a specific customer's account but said it's taking a more aggressive look at accounts in the current environment. But consumer advocates say cardholders are getting kicked when they're down. This is incredibly unfair. People need to know what the rules of the game are, and they follow them accordingly. Disgusted, Majors closed her Bank of America card and opened an account at her local credit union, where account holders have a voice in making the rules. I don't even want another credit card. I don't. I really don't. You've had it. I've had it. This Thursday, the Federal Reserve is expected to restrict certain credit card practices. Squeeze consumers could use the relief. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Now to a dramatic turn in the story of John Walsh. As you know, he's made a career out of helping police solve crimes on his TV show, America's Most Wanted. But there was one case he couldn't crack, the murder of his own son, Adam. Now, more than a quarter century after the six-year-old disappeared, police in South Florida have declared the case solved. Here's Kelly Cobiella. Any specifics here when you have a They're the words John and Reve Walsh had been longing to hear for 27 years. It is our determination and conclusion that Otis Tool was the abductor and murderer of Adam Walsh. A definitive answer as to who killed their six year old son, Adam Walsh, the smiling boy in the baseball cap. It was Otis Tool, a drifter and violent pedophile who died in prison 12 years ago. This is a wonderful, wonderful day, in spite of why we're here. For uh, 27 years, we've been asking, who could take a six-year-old boy and murder him and decapitate him? Who? We needed to know. Adam Walsh disappeared from a Sears store in Hollywood, Florida in 1981. He had been there with his mother. Reve said, Adam, I'll be in the lamp department two hours over. And he said, Mommy, I know where that is. And uh, 10 minutes later, she returned and he was gone. Two weeks after he vanished, fishermen found the boy's decapitated head in a canal more than 100 miles away. The rest of his body was never found. The next of kin is being notified at this point in time. Tool, a serial killer, was a suspect from the beginning, but police acknowledge missteps in the investigation, losing bloody carpet from Tool's car, then the car itself. Despite that, police say the circumstantial evidence is overwhelming. This is a day that's long overdue. It truly is. 
After Adam's murder, John Walsh became an activist for missing children, launching a TV show to track down violent criminals. This is a bad day for you. And pushing for laws to help parents. It's now my high honor to sign the Adam Walsh Child Protection and Safety Act. Today, he had a message for those parents. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Walsh said there is no closure, only justice, and his family finally has it. Kelly Cobiella, CBS News, Hollywood, Florida. Turning to health news now.